Welcome to the workshop. This is a quick review of the new Linen Dial Boltony Bubble Back Homage. Quite a mouthful there. This was my 1111 pickup and delivery was super fast, enough to beat the end of the Black Friday sale. So coupons and discounts are gonna be good through Tuesday night and this remains a great deal. The current cost is on the left. Using all the codes I can find, it comes to about 162 Canadian. That's the equivalent of about 121 USD. The listing is on the right and it's coming from the Heimdollar watch store. This is key because many sellers are selling this version for at least 20 bucks more. We've got several dial variations, both loomed and not. We also have the option of two different movements, a center seconds or a subdial movement. I looked exclusively for the former. It's a true no date NH38 and subdials are cool, but at this price, I really can't justify the ST17 movement. It is quite a dial. I do think the linen is the best of the bunch, though linen is a bit of a misnomer because we do have the uh, crosshatch texture, but the color of it and the finish is much more metallic. And that being said, I'm a huge fan of the dial. I think I prefer it to something that was trying to force the patina look because you get kind of that meteorite style and it also looks like an antique watch might look if you were to buy it back in the day. I do think the Boltony text could use some serifs or maybe just be a little bit larger to give it a bit more punch, but I do like that it's printed and fairly low key. Boltony is part of the Octopus Kraken group of stores and it's kind of their vintage dress watch line and you can tell that they've they've cut they've cut corners when it comes to the printing because they've put all of that money into the dial and i'm not making excuses for the brand i just think that's how the arithmetic breaks down this is my second boltony and both times i've been blown away by the finishing once i've got the watch in hand i'll do my best to catch that metallic silver dial for you and it's a great match with the silver arabics that are very finely polished Normally, we'd lose visibility with that silver on silver, but the contrast is actually coming from the texture on the dial versus the polishing on the hands and the numerals. Unfortunately, the hands don't stand out as well as the numerals. Again, I think some of the finer details on this watch could have just been made a little bit larger. I do like the classic lip shape. Uh, it's funny how a style can go from being completely generic to very uncommon just in a few years because I rarely see this shape on new releases. On the other hand, the seconds hand is blued and has a nice counterweight here at the back, so it's actually the most visible. I can't definitively say what type of bluing has been used here, but you'll notice that it continues all the way on the sides of the second hand as well, and it is a very deep, dark blue color that appears almost black from some angles. The dome sapphire crystal is a nice touch. It is some of the panache of an old acrylic, while at the same time feeling more premium than a flat sapphire. The downside is it does add a bit of thickness, coming in here at 13.5 millimeters. The diameter comes in at an even 36 millimeters, and the lug to lug length is an equally compact 43.5 millimeters. These are 18 millimeter lugs, so will fit your vintage, your dress watch standard strap size. At the lugs, we have the most distinctive part of the case, which is this extended section. It's very art deco, almost like a faux hooded lug, and it gives the watch some of the presence of a barrel shape while retaining your classic round. So I think uh, it does definitely help give the smaller watch a bit more wrist presence. In the early 20th century, the crown was one of the first adopters of automatic movements, but that required just dropping basically an automatic module on the back of their original Egler movements. So that necessitated a very deep case back, which is where we get the name bubble back from. In fact, this is probably more wearable than those early versions because they were quite small, between 30 and 32 millimeters, and very thick. So it got the nickname bubble back and also little egg. I could see this watch appealing to just a general collector of watches who's into vintage watches and wants something that they can wear every day. In that vein, we have a screw down crown with a stated water resistance of 200 meters. It's nice and easy to grab. You can see from the shape, I'd be a little worried about it snagging on clothing. And this is an NH38 no date. 
Another reason this watch might have some mainstream appeal is the excellent level of finishing. It's easily the level of San Martin or Escapement Time. I particularly like the brushing. It's just very finely done, very soft, and then set off by these sharp edges, but that aren't too sharp to the touch. I also like how the interior of the lugs is brushed to the same degree, and that's contrasted with the polished sides to the case, matching the beautiful polished bezel. The strap seems to be made of good quality leather that should develop a nice patina as it ages. I do think that these dual stitch straps are, you know, kind of 2015. It is a uh, signed Boltony and tapers down from 18 millimeters at the lugs to 16 millimeters at the buckle. And fortunately, we have a very nicely polished buckle to match the top of the case. Ho 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 folks, I don't know, looks pretty good, might be a keeper. I also don't think I'll be able to replicate that circa 120 US dollar price anytime soon. Unfortunately, I was a bit slow with this video, so that deal is only good for the next 12 hours. But if you're watching this in the future, I'm interested to hear your thoughts on Boltony, specifically the finishing, the kind of quirky homages, and where you feel it belongs in the marketplace. And tune in on the weekend because I've got a special episode coming up, a tour of the Horological Society of New York. But until then, thanks for watching.